Hi everyone, welcome back. I've got something very special for you today and it's these. These are colour previewers. They were designed and made by Maria Kellner in Australia. I'm sure a lot of you know um, who Maria is but for those that don't she's a brilliant artist and very helpful, knowledgeable lady. She's given me a lot of help and advice um, since I've been on YouTube and she very kindly sent me a set of these colour previewers. I was so happy and excited to receive them. As soon as I saw them on Maria's website, I just knew they'd be so beneficial to my painting. And now I've actually got them and I've, I've tried them. I find them absolutely indispensable. So what they're used for is you hold them over your paintings um, to evaluate the colour to see if you need another wash or another glaze um, without going too dark or getting the wrong colour and spoiling your painting. They're designed for all media, um, not just watercolour, but oil paints, acrylic, um, pastels, coloured pencils, marker pens even, and I even use the Payne's Grey on the graphite drawings that I do, and that helped me to evaluate the tone. So, very useful and versatile set. Now the colours in the standard set are Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, um, Purple Magenta, Payne's Grey, Thalo Green, Sap Green, Indian Yellow, Oriolin Yellow, Scarlet Red, Ruby Red or Permanent Rose as it says in brackets there, um, Alizarin Crimson and Translucent Orange. Now when you get these they come with a little leaflet that Maria sends with them and Maria says that the colours are generic so the set can be used for any reds, blues, greens, yellows, oranges, greys etc. Um, that are on your palette and that's absolutely true because I don't have all the exact same colours as these some of them I do some of them I don't um, and the ones that I don't um, like for example the yellows I used lemon yellow and it worked perfectly with the aureolin and the same with scarlet red that worked with the cadmium red and the Windsor red um, so yeah you know if you've not got the same colours don't worry about it um, they will work in just the same way um, for example, I, I use Hooker's Green um, instead of Sap Green. I do use Sap Green, but it's not a regular on my palette. And I found that by placing the Thalo Blue over the Sap Green, I got a really nice sort of simulation of Hooker's Green. It does actually make a difference which way around you put these. Um, so for example, if you put the blue over the green, you're going to get obviously um, a bluer looking green and the other way around if you put the sap green over the blue it's going to look a little bit greener so very useful you know you can play around with them and mix colours um, until you get everything absolutely right right okay so I'll just bring in a painting and I'll show you and I'll do a little demonstration for you right okay so here's one of my um, old paintings let me just Move that round on the side there, so see if we can still get most of it in the frame, just about. Um, yeah, so as soon as I got these, actually, I tested a lot of my old paintings, and I found that approximately sort of 80 to 90 percent of them um, needed extra glazes and and the colour strengthening and things like that. Um, and I thought the paintings looked fine until I actually, um, you know, tried these. So. What I've done with this one, I thought, okay, we'll hold a few colours over it and we'll just kind of see what happens. Um, and I used Indian Yellow and Translucent Yellow, which gives sort of a... Um, just move that out of the way so you can see it on the white thing. It gives sort of a... I guess, sort of a raw sienna type colour there. And I held it over the, the buildings and instantly... If you try and avoid looking at the, the trees there, but instantly you can see that that building there could have definitely used a stronger, stronger wash of colour. The same with that one there. Sap green and thalo blue on the tree to try and get um, there we go. What I've done there is I actually I'll just move this out of the way. What I've found you can do with these colour previews, you can actually slide them in. Because they're uh, graduated from dark to light, 
when you're using two together you can actually slide one over the other until you actually get the exact colour that you're looking for. So what I've done with this tree, instead of just sort of going over it with the sap green, I thought, no, that looks just too green and the blue was sort of too cool. Um, by combining both of them and sliding one in gradually over the other until I get to that sweet spot, which is just there, right in the middle. And that green is perfect to go over that tree. And also I used, if I just move that up a little bit, I used Payne's Grey and just push that in up in the bottom area of the tree there, just the bottom part, just to darken it off where to be more in shade. And I thought, wow, that's absolutely transformed that painting. I hope the camera's picking that up. These can be often funny things for cameras to pick up, so I hope it's sort of looking okay. So, you know, I mean, isn't that brilliant? You know, you can actually mix your colours by sliding these over. Evaluate the tone to see if it needs to go darker. And you can also see if it needs to go darker by placing the darker areas of the colour preview, uh, color previewers over the painting as well. But I just thought that um, that was probably too dark, the full strength um, green and blue together. So by sliding them in, I could actually find that sweet spot and get the tone and the colour perfect. Isn't that just brilliant? I think that's absolutely brilliant. What a brilliant invention these are. And I also tested the, the side of the building there. Once I'd put the, um, this warmer colour over the buildings, I thought maybe I could have used a, a darker shadow on the side of the buildings. And look at that. Definitely needed a darker shadow on the buildings and stronger, warmer paint on the front of the building. But there you go. You know, we live and learn, don't we? I'd have never have guessed that without the help of these. Absolutely brilliant. Right, I'll kind of just straighten these up a little bit. Oh, um, one thing I forgot to mention was, um, once you've found that, that sweet spot, as I called it, uh, when you've got the colour just right, if you transfer that onto a white background, like a piece of paper or something, you can bring your palette in at the side um, and mix the colour as near as possible. You've got it there right in front of you. Um, you can either do that by using phthalo blue or sub green or the nearest colours that you've got on your palette. Or another option, um, what you can actually do is apply two layers of paint, one of sub green and then phthalo blue on top or the other way around, whichever you like the look of best. Um, but obviously you've got to let each layer dry before you apply the other one and you can gradually build up um, Build up your glazes in, in layers like that, that can give a very uh, nice effect actually. So I just thought that was uh, worth mentioning. Right, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to put some links in the um, description below. Um, the first one will be for Maria Kellner's website, um, where you can go and check these out and have a look at them, and also have a look at her paintings as well. I think you'll agree they're pretty amazing. Um, her email address is there, so you can contact her if you've got any further questions about these. And also, the other two links that I'm going to provide, one of them is for um, Colour in Your Life. You know Graham Stevenson, the guy that goes around on his motorbike um, interviewing artists? Um, well, one of the artists he interviews is Susan Harrison Tustain, and you're pro I'm sure you've probably all heard of Susan. She's probably the, well, I think she's probably the best watercolour artist um, in the world today. And she actually uses these and she gives a little demonstration on them um, in the video that I'm going to provide the link for. So, well, that's, I mean, that's a good testimony in itself, isn't it? If uh, Susan's using these, well, there you go. Um, and the other um, link that I'm going to provide is to a channel called um, Hajra Meeks. Now, Hajra, she's got a channel which um, demonstrates watercolour, uh, gouache. Uh, very informative channel. I've subscribed, actually. And um, one of her videos, which will be the link that I provide, um, will be showing these. She's actually got a set of these and she gives a demonstration on these as well. So, uh, yeah, please go and check those out. Um, and also, um, 
I have to say that I'm not affiliated with this at all and those links that I um, put in the bottom there I don't get paid for or anything like that there's no affiliate links there or anything um, it's just they're just sort of links to videos so don't worry about anything you know I'm not getting paid for it or anything like that you know this is my honest opinion my honest review um, and I think you've guessed already I think these are absolutely brilliant um, and also can I ask you to share this video it's not necessarily for my benefit but I just think that um, a lot of artists I think will be interested in these um, I could only imagine if these were on the shops you know they'd be flying off the shelves if there were, if more artists were aware of these so um, if you could share this video uh, as much as you can with your artist friends and people online so we can bring these brilliant colour previewers to the attention of all artists um, yeah I think it's just one of those great products that just needs to be you know passed around and, and made aware of so um, yeah I'd be really grateful if you could do that right okay so thanks very much for viewing and uh, I'll see you next time bye for now